Hello everyone, this is Lisa from World Wheelchair Warriors. And I wanted to do another presentation on housing because it's one of the most difficult issues that we have, you know, is people with disabilities. So let's start taking a look. This presentation is not long, but I did want to work this out with you all. So the introduction is what I just said, you know, this is mainly about options and ideas addressing the housing issue for the disabled and mainly ideas for you because there's a lot that takes involved that's that's involved in, in terms of housing. Okay, so what is our main problem? A lack of housing for those with disabilities. There's not sufficient housing for willingness to adapt housing for the disabled and lack of understanding of what adaptations should be, especially for someone in a wheelchair. Sometimes they adapt the kitchen and that's it. Or sometimes they'll do the bathroom and they won't do anything else. Or they'll do the bathroom, but in a wrong way. Or they'll do the bedroom and the kitchen and that's it. So <laughs> it kind of drives me crazy. So it's, it's that kind of thing that if, if a landlord says, okay, I'll adapt it for you, you know, be a little bit more in control and, and talk to the landlord in terms of, you know, what, what, what adaptations do you really need? So, so that's really important to, to talk about. Finances, you know, how are you doing financially? What is it that you can afford or not afford? So you really have to look at your funding. You know, how are you set up financially? Where are you, where is your comfort zones? Would you have to move to another state? And what I mean about moving to another state is that, you know, New York and California, they both have high cost of living, very high. So that might be a struggle for you to deal with every day. So decisions have to be made. Once you look at your finances and you're realistic about that, then you know, you gotta evaluate what state you're in and the cost of living there. Assess the participation of your family. So they might say, hey, Carlos, you know, we'll adapt the garage for you. Or Patricia, we'll add a little, a little spot for you next to our house and we'll make it all adaptable for you. You know, sometimes that happens. So that would be awesome. Or we'll give you this space and, and you find out, you know, how you'll cover it. <laughs> uh, you'd have to raise some funds because it can get a little expensive. Um, work with the landlord. Sometimes you say, man, if I could only rent this house because it's in the right spot where I need it, but it's not adaptable. So maybe if I talk to the landlord, you would be willing. So sometimes landlords are flexible that, like that, and it's an opportunity for them to get funding from the state to adapt a house or, or an apartment for someone. And they'll say yes. Sometimes they really say yes. So, um, you know, and, and you can put some equity into it. You can put some sweat into it and they'll reduce the rent for you and you can help, you know, work on making it adaptable. Uh, consider a trailer, consider a mobile home. You know, again, if you, if you were offered by SSDI a lump sum, because sometimes that happens, then you, you could consider a trailer or a mobile home. However, uh, how to decide those decisions, because those are big ones, either to rent or to purchase. So decide on your own, ask for input from a friend, from family, from a financial person, or I should have put down here an organization that helps people with disabilities. And to me, that would be the wisest. I, I wouldn't have a clue, but you, you wanna make sure that those decisions that you make are sound. 
consider any legal needs. Now, this is something that we all jump over. <laughs> we don't want to deal with it. <laughs> we just say, ah, no, I don't want to have anything to do with that. However, you do need to protect yourself, especially if you purchase something. <laughs> um, you know, if you move in with someone, your spouse, you know, nobody gets married to get divorced. Nobody does. Um, that's not your plan. However, if you separate or you're divorced, you need to set up something that protects you. You're the person with disability. So you want to make sure that you are covered if this relationship falls through. Moving in with a friend, <laughs> who's going to go on the paperwork? A partner, if you're moving in with a partner, that's great, that's fun. However, who's going on the paperwork? And remember, you got to be a little bit selfish and make sure that you are protected. Are you moving in with an assistant who will live there part time? You know, you've got to protect yourself as well. Teaming up with another person with disabilities could be, but also you want to make sure that legally you are protected so that something doesn't happen, that other person, you know, or, you know, if that person moves out, will you be able to cover the, the cost of having that mobile home or that trailer home? Or the rent, if you're renting. Maintenance. Uh, if you own, if you end up owning something, then it's always going to require maintenance. Change the carpet, fix the windows, painting, fix the kitchen if something breaks, you know, so it's, it's a thing. It's not going to last forever, and there are parts that need uh, fixing. So you've got to consider that if you end up owning something. If you're renting, it's different. Then the landlord has to take charge of fixing that item. So will you have funds for that? Will you use a special organization to help you out? Do you have family who will assist in doing those repairs? Insurance, are you gonna insure your, your items in case there's a fire, in case there's a tornado, in case there's, you know, uh, insurance? I know nobody wants to think about that because it's gonna cost per month, but important to consider it. And don't worry, be happy. <laughs> This is an important one, because <laughs> sometimes the things that I just said are a little bit heavy, <laughs> but uh, they are important, and, and they are important because it has to do with you, and you know, you want to make sure that you're covered, you want to make sure there's a backup to your life, and sometimes financially, we don't have much anyway, but you want to make sure that there's something a backup plan to the backup plan to make sure that you don't have to worry for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. And an organization that works with people with disabilities can help you plan for those things, for illness, for catastrophes, for an accident, you know, they can help you think through uh, so that you can look at the future a little bit, even if it's five to ten years, uh, so that if if something goes awry, that you are covered. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress. That your your belongings and your funds are protected. So it's doing all these things so that you don't have to worry and you can be happy <laughs> and enjoy life. <laughs> and get up in the morning and say, it's a good day. <laughs> and tomorrow is another good day. So I just want to encourage you for that. And I will certainly see you in the next video. And any questions you might have, not that I will be able to answer it. It might be a financial or a legal person that needs to answer, but, um, but post down the question. We'll figure it out. All right. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video for sure. <laughs>